Welcome to the PC. So, uh, so what is the full form of VPC? Uh, VPC is Virtual Private Cloud. Uh, um, the one line definition of VPC is it gives uh, a, any customer, it's like uh, your own, when you create a VPC, you are creating your own network and you place all your instances, whatever you launch inside this, that VPC and you can decide which traffic to come in and go out of the VPC. So for example, suppose you have typical 3T architecture, uh, say one is web tier, then app tier, then data tier. You want web tier to talk to the internet, but you don't want app tier and data tier to, to be any way connected to internet. So in that case, what it'll do is, uh, it'll create three different subnets in, in your VPC and your web tier, only your web tier will be uh, able to talk to the internet so let me show how it uh, how it is done uh, so this is you already know this so the blue section is the region that is us east one or north virginia but then we have these black uh, individual data centers or or um, az's so we have already discussed this. These are all AZs. So uh, North Virginia has actually six AZs, but I am showing only three. So if you remember uh, in, in our previous section, when it discussed basic networking, I, I told you that how router works. So router is nothing but um, you have a, a connectivity to the internet and all your devices, your laps, laptop, your desktop, your smartphones, your, your gadgets, everything would be connected to the router. So all uh, the machines inside of your home are actually within the router's private LAN and router has an internet facing site also which will talk to the internet. So uh, internet cannot talk to the individual machines directly, it has to go through the router. So that is that's what router is. We have, we have already discussed this in detail. So what is VPC? VPC is actually uh, the implementation of router in 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 uh, AWS, if you will. So VPC is actually a virtual router, and it spans the entire region. The reason uh, reason it spans the entire region. Uh, for example, say you have AT and T broadband in your in your home. Uh, and uh, say you are in Chicago so the entire Chicago region would have only one router or maybe two or three depending on how big the, the how big our customer base they have they might have one to multiple routers similar is the case so VPC spans the entire region across all the ages and you can create not only one you can create multiple uh, multiple VPCs depending on your requirement so if if, yeah, if this is vpc1 then you can create another vpc which is called vpc2 of course you can have connectivity between between the vpcs using vpc peering which we'll discuss uh, in due course but right now to keep uh, things simple let's discuss only with one vpc sorry so uh, this is our vpc right so the name of this vpc is say uh, my vpc and this is I've created. So basically, when you create a VPC, we, we create a virtual router. Now, if you remember the discussion on router, I told you, right, router is a very mini computer. It has a lot of com components. So one of the components in router is an internet gateway. So internet gateway is actually the thing which connects your machines or devices to the internet via the router. So every connection from your device will go to the internet via router via internet gateway within your router similarly here also you don't get an internet gateway by default you have to create an internet gateway so this would be your internet gateway so this is your internet gateway and so this is your internet gateway and your internet gateway would when you create the internet gateway you decide you, you connect this internet gateway to uh, the vpc so this will be attached to the vpc right now coming back to uh, the other components subnets going back to the discussion of routers if you have a bigger network you have say multiple departments 
uh, what you do is you divide your network so router gives you a network right and what you do is you divide the network into multiple small sub networks so that you can fit in multiple departments into your sub networks similarly here you can create subnets within uh, inside of this vpc and the subnets have uh, subnets have to be created in one of the availability zones or the other one az can contain one or multiple subnets so for example say um, let's say this az can contain only two subnets this AZ can contain only one subnet. Again, this AZ might contain three subnets. All these things would depend on your requirement. How do you want to, how, how you have defined your networking topology? How do you want to implement that networking topology in VPC? So all these things will be dependent on that. So there's no a rule of thumb that each AZ has to have only one subnet or more than one subnet. It, it entirely depends on your architecture. How do, you want to, uh, how do you want to place the subnets, right? Now, one more interesting fact here is all these sub So, before going to the interesting fact, you launch your EC2 instances inside these subnets. That, that's what we have seen until now. So, let me pull up a different color. So, so what you do is you launch all your EC2 instances inside of so these small red boxes are nothing but your EC2 instances. Suppose this subnet can contain only two EC2 instances. You can decide that this subnet would contain so six EC2 instances, so on and so forth. So these are all your EC2 instances. Now, uh, by default, if you launch the EC2 instances inside of your subnet, they cannot talk to the uh, to the internet. So if you want uh, your EC2 instances in a subnet to talk to the internet, you have to do some one additional stuff. So that stuff is interesting. So I told you that the, you can connect this internet gateway to a VPC. You can attach this internet gateway to, uh, to your VPC. There's one more thing you can do. You can not only attach this internet gateway to your VPC, you can attach in, in this internet gateway to individual subnets also. So I'll, I'll show you the demo shortly. So when you attach this internet gateway to a particular subnet, that subnet becomes a public subnet. So only <coughs> EC2 instances inside this sub, inside that subnet can talk to the internet. So this is your internet, and you have an internet connectivity via the internet gateway of the router. And as this subnet is connected to the internet gateway, only EC2 instances inside this subnet can talk to the internet. Say for example, I attach I attach this uh, subnet, right? I attach this, so I attach this internet gateway to this subnet. Then all the EC2 instances inside the uh, this subnet will be able to talk to the internet. But this is, um, EC2 instances inside this subnet, this subnet, this subnet, and this one have no way to talk to the internet. So these two subnets are called private subnets and all these all these subnets which cannot talk to the internet sorry my bad this subnet is called a public subnet and all these subnets which cannot talk to the internet which do not have internet gateway attached to it are called private subnets and so that is the definition between uh, private and public subnet so that's what it has defined here so let's uh, give you a very brief demo about how to define a network in a VPC and how do you define the CIDR block. So what you do here is you go to this VPC section, go to services and click on VPC and take you to this VPC screen and then you go to your VPCs and you click on create VPC. So you name it as say my VPC and then you define the CIDR block. Remember this CIDR block is for Public, uh, private subnet it has nothing to do with internet so this is your private network this is not a public network so once you create it might take some time voila there we go you have your vpc created so you have created your virtual gateway then 
as I said, it needs the, the additional component, which is the internet gateway. So here you have to create the internet gateway. How do you do it? You go to the internet gateway section and then create internet gateway. Say you name it as my internet gateway. Yes, create. That is that simple. Then you attach this internet gateway to, to your VPC. It will give you, the, give you the VPC options and attach it to my VPC. Now, this section is done. I create this VPC, which is the orange section, and the pink section, the, the internet gateway. I have created this internet gateway and attached it, attached it to my VPC. So I have internet connect, connectivity. Now I'll have to go and define or create the subnets uh, inside this VPC, which I'll talk. Uh, that is our next, next topic of discussion. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video and if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPat.